Hello! Welcome to my Let's Play of Servo's beta campaign. This game isn't done yet, so while this should be pretty representative of how this plays in the campaign, the missions will probably change before it comes out next year. For those who haven't seen this game before, this is a hero RTS. It's being made by some of the folks who worked for Ensemble Studios. The gameplay should be pretty familiar to people who, all, who have played Warcraft 3, though it plays a bit differently. The hero units should also be familiar to MOBA players, though this is not really a MOBA. Before we jump into the first mission, let's go over my uh, my team build real quick. As you can see, I've got this team of robots. Yeah, um, I'm only going to go over this team build once because it works pretty well for all the missions. Okay, so I'm going to go into the servo hangar. And we've got these pilots. Each one has a servo on them. We can change servos around. Let's put on some resists, cheap foundations, shield generators, rocket pods, all that stuff. So I'm going to go, um, I only use these three in the campaign, so I'm just going to go over these three. You got, um, so these heroes, they're kind of like, and their items are kind of like your deck of cards in Mage Empire 3. So, um, you slot them onto these robots and they either change the stats of the robot, your entire force, or give an ability. In this case, it gives an ability called Volley, and then at age 3 it turns into Hail Mary. Same for this one. Does it launches a whole bunch of rockets, about 10 of them, and they do 25 damage each in a rather large area. Backing that up, I have a rifle as my main weapon, a better stunning laser rifle. Using that and this Gorgon visor, I get somewhere around 30% chance to stun. Rather than being 8 seconds, it's like 14 seconds. There's also a little bit of health from the early access racer. Torso and some move speed. Nothing that exciting, but they're pretty good items. CPU slots here, they're, um, they're mostly for um, affecting your force. So, um, I don't have very good ones at the moment, so these kind of just hold the places in. This is my second servo, um, it's piloted by Blink. Blink teleports around. It's got a bit of a cooldown on it, but you can use it to um, pull your ass out of the fire pretty well. It goes nearly double rifle range away from um, where you were and yes you um, it works very well for a character like this where I've got lots of armor on her. These armor plates have got 13 armor on that and about 10 on that which adds up to 23 which would reduce this, um, for every point of armor, you reduce the incoming damage by 1 DPS. So, with those two items, that one is brought down to 3 DPS, and that one's brought down to 8. Starts at 21. Now, she's got a, um, a freezer. It doesn't proc very much, but I might as well put it on the melee. And move speed actuator, which is very nice for putting on melee units. She's got melee pants on as well. I mean, I've just got move speed pants on and some very nice 
nice armor, shielding, um, torso and head as well. This head gets better with age. Um, it starts off with three, then six, nine, which is pretty good. You bring that up to um, 47 armor, SCON 3. So 38 DPS off all up, which would completely mitigate this without tech. This is my third pilot, Hawk. Hawk um, can mind control pets. It's permanent, kind of like um, Dark Archons in StarCraft 2. He uses grenades, so he's got a uh, grenade loader box which halves the cooldown of this, brings it down to 15 seconds. This is just a, um, a, a common mid-level frag grenade launcher. It's the best one I've got at the moment. I've also got a kind of mediocre um, wide shot rifle, but I'll wear it on this character just to um, bring some more AoE damage in. Works very good against creeps and units. He's also bringing along a damage buff for the best um, damage dealing unit in the game, but it's a unit I only really use in the last age, so this guy usually gets dropped last. Also adds some health to them as well. It's got pretty standard legs on, it's a bit of armor. Um, he's taken this, um, this bling torso because it's got health on it and the um, grenade launcher head which does um, which adds on seven more damage to this frag grenade every page so it'll end up somewhere like 21 extra damage bring up to like 270 so um, you also um, I'll go over how you get those parts real quick before I go into the mission. You've got this thing in here. You can you earn credits for doing uh, multiplayer and skirmish, and that can be spent on these crates. So I'll buy this crate here. A burning chain gun, stun resist, Gatling gun, some scrap. Now over here you can. Um, sell things that you don't want, like if I don't want this thing, which I don't, I click it and it's gone, and it adds on some scrap. Now you might be thinking, oh god, is that the premium currency? No, it's not, it's, um, it's a strange system where you're, mo you're mostly given credits, which buy you these crates, and then you can sell the items to save up for buying these ones over here, which can get quite pricey. Like that one costs 32,000 scrap, which would require like a lot of selling. As you can see, like you don't get very many, very much scrap for each item. Like um, most of these are under 100. There's a couple that are in like around 400. This one's 800. So some of them are nice sells, but. They're not really items you're going to sell anyway. All the vendor trash is not very good for selling. Anyway, so with the scrap you can buy something like, say, um, find a cheap one. These pants. You just go, oh, now I've got the pants. You also get an item for every time you do skirmish or multiplayer. Um, that's win or lose, you just get a random item. The um, the pool of what items you can get is determined by your level. You, you get up to max level pretty quickly, especially with the campaign. Now here in the campaign menu we've got um, 10 missions. It's going to be 25 when the game launches, but for now it's only 10. 
Okay, so you'll do four difficulties here. These three are the only ones that give rewards. Easy doesn't even unlock the next mission, so it's basically only for a practice, but no one's really going to need it. Normal is pretty easy. Um, quickly explain how difficulty works in this game. Um, while in this menu you've got these three discrete categories, it's actually on a sliding scale based on your level, which you can easily see in the skirmish menu. So down here at 70 for me um, is easy. If I bring it up to 80 because I'm level 8, it'll be normal. If I add another 10, I go into hard and add another 10, it becomes insane. You can go 5 beyond that if you wanted to for really insane, but I don't think the campaign menu does. As you can see, um, you get a, a light. I kind of just call them stars anyway. I can three star the mission, seems easier to say. And for doing each one on, um, you get a whole bunch of stuff like you'll get this item for doing this mission on Insane. And this one, these are really good, I've had them before. Doing that on Insane will get you that. And then on Hard you get these blues. Sometimes epics as well. Alright, anyway. Um, I promise I won't be doing this um, rambling on about stuff in the main menu thing for the next episode. We'll be getting on to the first mission now. Now, I'm not going to read out the voices for these guys. It's none of it's voice acted either. So, get reading. Now, um, I'll quickly explain some of the basics of this. This is your dropship. It's um, basically you on the map. This blows up, you're gone. This also applies in single player missions. Around your dropship, you've got a drop zone. You also get it around the servos as well. And inside there, you have. You can build things, but you can't build outside a drop zone. This thing here is a bloom well. Now this is a very strange bloom well, it's got infinite bloom. You never see this outside of this first mission. And we're going to put a finery on it. harvesting the bloom. Every five seconds a little rocket will come out. Any moment. There it is. When it goes into orbit you get your 15 credits. However much it said was on the um, on the rocket. Now to make this go faster you make these supply drones. They're working in it. Unlike other games working units, uh, these ones don't scale up in a linear fashion. You know how like, um, you've got your resource line in StarCraft and one SEV. And that SEV will get a certain amount of minerals every trip back and that takes it a certain amount of time. And if you were to put a second SEV in, you're now gathering twice as fast. This isn't the case with servos ones. Um, it actually scales up in a much nicer fashion. So these multiplicative, um, uh, bit of a mouthful that one, um, bonuses to um, the action properties of this. In this case, it's, it's yield and it's speed in between. 
open it up. And then it multiplies it by 1.3. For each drone, it adds another multiplier at 1.3. So the more drones you have on a well, the faster it's going to go. So I've got 5 on here. If I was to put 10, which I will have in a bit, you, um, you would get um, a much higher rate than simply having 5 here and then 5 on another well. It doesn't just scale linear, in a linear fashion. I'm building a factory here. This is kind of like your supply depot or your farm. You can see it's increased the population by 5. Five supply drones. I'm just going to get ten of them. You don't really need that many because after about ten you start sucking up wells in under a minute. It's, um, you end up not really considering the rate of income and more how many resources are left on the map and can you get it to them. Now at the same time as being basically your farm these also create your units, so you're encouraged to make a whole bunch of them, which is good because it um, it also helps you make more units and resupply faster. Enough talking, I'll, um, I'll drop him in and advance the mission. Now this, this is the the first villain of the the campaign of the, the Dark Sun Pirates. They've all got purple hair for some reason. I forget what their backstory is. I think they were like scientists that went through to look at Earth and then they decided they wanted to just mine the bloom. The bloom must flow. Fabrics here and get shooting. Yeah, see my my stun rifle is already paid off. It's just sitting there. Now that all these factories queue up a whole bunch of units. Here's really why this isn't a MOBA. Um, see the sort of damage I'm doing right now. Now the units come in. Boom. Your heroes really can't get much done by themselves. So they aren't quite good. Build buildings um, wherever you have drop zone, and as you can see, um, if I bring up build here, you can build around the servo. Just notice they took away beacons for this mission. Oh shit! <laughs> Gladiator out of nowhere.
check this out. <laughs> A lot of the maps take place in cities, so I end up this cool sort of thing with all these streets and suburbs and stuff. Get a heal beam out of the dropship. There's also beacons you can get, but they're not um, available on this mission. That's cool, mazed it. Once you get the units out, this mission's really a pushover. Oh no, I'm taking casualties. Oh, I have to rebuild this army. See how much slower it goes with one less. And then she got say, three less. It's nearly half as slow as it was with these three on. The wonder of supply drones. Bring my guy around. Because, um, drop zones mostly tied to your servo, you've got to move your servos around to get your buildings up. But on the upside this means you can build pretty much anywhere. You don't have to bring your little supply drones out the door or anything like that. She right. Can they come again? I see this guy's got two thousand health as opposed to my ninety and my nine hundred, so that's how much the units really help there.
dude's so purple, he's got purple eyes. There's a little stat screen now. I wish they had a little graph, like timeline or something. Okay, well that one was uh, pretty long. I'm not going to go over any of that other stuff um, for the next one. I'm just going to go straight to the mission. Anyway, I'm going to stop this one and I'll be back in a moment.